Hi, coming to you today to recap uh, the last five videos that uh, I posted on the YouTube channel, A Hip Journey, and I thought I would explain what those were. So first and foremost, um, I had my first surgery in Delaware with a hip surgeon that was pretty new at doing arthroscopic hip surgery. Arthroscopic hip surgery is uh, a scope that's in, introduced into your joint to explore and repair um, you know, any structures inside the joint. Um, after that surgery, the surgeon was confident that I was going to need to seek further, more specialized care. And he knew of a surgeon in New York City. Um, and so he referred me there. And because I was new uh, to the whole hip world of hip preservation, um, I jumped at the chance to be able to go see someone that he knew and had confidence in. So I met with uh, the second surgeon in, um, my second surgeon, but the first one in New York City in April of 2009 and uh, agreed to have a procedure with him in late May of 2009. Along with agreeing to have the surgery, I had to agree to see the hip specialist um, that he was um, in partnership with uh, there in uh, Manhattan. So in, in agreeing to have the rehab there, I moved to New York City um, early May and I left in late August. The videos that you um, perhaps just watched or one or two of them, uh, there were five of them in total. They were different types of maneuvers that were an effort to try to get my knee straight and my hip straight as well as not turned inward or outward uh, because I was having some complications from the procedure. Um, my, my body was responding in a way um, that it was trying to protect itself from the joint coming apart. And so I don't know how long it was after the procedure, but I did start to recognize there was a major problem. And uh, this is where I really wanted to highlight to say to anyone that is injured, has undergone any procedure of any kind, you tend to know your body best and you need to be your own advocate. Uh, hopefully you have a great medical team that will come alongside of you to solve any, uh, any problems uh, that, that arise uh, that maybe even can foresee a problem that maybe you don't even recognize, but it's critically important that you advocate for yourself. And I was trying to do so, but I was being dismissed. And um, in August, I decided I was coming back home because the physical therapist was not listening. Uh, my last visit with the physical therapist um, was eye-opening for me because I kept saying, my hip is going to snap. My joint is going to come apart. Actually, it's so loose. I don't think it would stay dislocated. I think it would, I think it already partially is all the time. But when I apply weight, it's going to snap. And that was part of the problem I had before, but it was even more of a problem now. And so he didn't believe me. Uh, he goes, there's no way, there's no way. He cut a big hole in this or, you know, he did that and there's no way that it's gonna snap. I said, it will, because it's come close without me putting all this weight on it. If I try to take a step, I guarantee you. And unfortunately, that's exactly what happened. I had to demonstrate for him trying to take a step and snap, my hip went out. And, you know, he was very wide eyed, couldn't believe it. Uh, you know, it was all apologetic, you know, let's get this back right, let's get some ice on it, you know, was basically saying, um, you were right. Uh, but I had already made up my mind that I was leaving his practice and I was pretty sure I was gonna be leaving the surgeon because at that point I had asked uh, for more transparency and for more clarity in what was going on with my hip and I wasn't getting anywhere. 
So by um, November of 20, yeah, 2009, I left um, the surgeon in New York City. Um, but the, uh, back, to the, back to the videos, um, he was trying to get my leg straight and he was using whatever he needed to use, whether it was his body weight, a strap, uh, the side of the table. Um, and he was forcing uh, both my hip joint and my knee joint to do things that my body knew were not good. And my leg shaking or foot shaking, what have you, in those videos, is pain. It's not me consciously trying to hold something in a position. Um, that was an evoke of pain. Um, there was ripping of tissue in those um, sessions. The reason that I can solidify that is when I found the second surgeon in New York City, Dr. Brian Kelly, um, he confirmed via MRIs and CT scans, and then eventually surgically, um, that there were absolutely surgical errors done and potentially um, exacerbated uh, by the physical therapist. And that treatment that I received, the surgery and the uh, rehabilitation are really at the root of why I am the way I am today. And even though I was advocating, and I did advocate and eventually leave on my own accord, um, it still was too late. It was, it was still too late. So when I found the second uh, surgeon in New York City, it was December of 2009. I had returned to work in August of 2009 and worked uh, at the high school where I got hurt as a teacher and athletic trainer. And uh, that fall, I was writing letters and contacting different hip specialists um, in New York City as well as outside of New York City. Uh, one was in Colorado and one was in Tennessee. And then I contacted Dr. Brian Kelly in New York City. Proctor, Dr. Kelly, um, is at the hospital for special surgery and is just an outstanding individual and a phenomenal surgeon. I have the absolute utmost respect for him. He's just um, really quite frankly, undescribable. <laughs> uh, I developed quite a, a relationship with him uh, from a patient standpoint. Uh, I couldn't have asked for more attentive care, truly. Uh, the whole staff at the Hospital for Special Surgery, or HSS for short, uh, they're, they're just phenomenal. But um, those procedures, I thought it was important to show you what I endured and why, goodness, you've had surgery after surgery. I had assault after assault on my, on my right lower extremity. So important to know that. Um, so in December of 2009, I met with Dr. Kelly for the first time. And the months of January and February, he had asked me to get some more testing done to make sure there wasn't anything more systemic going on um, to basically to rule them out. If I had any type of cerebral palsy because there was nerve, major nerve damage, um, and then the response of my leg to um, the, any type of evaluation, um, he just wanted to make sure to rule out a variety of other things. CP, uh, he wanted to make sure I didn't have any bone diseases, cancer, leukemia, anything along those lines first before he looked at the orthopedic problems that I was facing. So that took both um, January and February of 2010. And I continued to work, but made trips to New York City uh, as needed to, to get those testing done. He wanted all those testing done at the hospital for special surgery because it is a special place for special complicated issues. 
and um, so I would travel back and forth as needed to to get those testing done and uh, finally in May of 2010 I had agreed to move again to New York City to have the hip procedure we thought it would be about a six month rehab for me to be able to get back to being able to work um, and not be maybe fully recovered but you know pretty good chance of you know being well on my way so I had an open hip dislocation surgery which means that they make an incision mine happened to be about 12 or 13 inches along the outside of my hip and they take the femur and cut it in half so that they can look inside of your hip joint or well, they cut it at the at the top so they can take the ball out of the socket and um, so he addressed um, errors that was made in the previous surgery the biggest one I don't know if it's big or not biggest it was big but there was two big things one I had um, some suturing of a muscle to what's called a joint capsule and uh, that would not allow me to get my leg straight the way that he sewed it it didn't matter what we did I wasn't gonna be able to get my leg straight going back to the videos that were just posted on my YouTube channel there um, the errors in rehab he was trying to get my leg straight. He couldn't because it was sewn together. It'd be like taking two pieces of fabric and sewing them together and then just thinking you're just gonna be able to pull them apart. And that's essentially what he was doing. He was trying to pull two things that were sewn together apart. You're not gonna do that. They were sutured together. The other thing was the um, surgeon in New York City cut a big diamond hole in my structure called IT band. And that's a big problem because I did not have a ligament called the ligamentum teres, which is like a tie rod on the inside of your hip joint. I had torn it, completely ruptured it when I had my injury. So I didn't have a major ligament to hold my joint together. And now the IT band is the lateral or side support of your hip. So now I don't have that because he cut a big hole in it because he thought it's snapping was meaning that it was tight. It was snapping because it was holding my hip together. My, my hip was coming apart and this structure sits on the outside of your hip joint. And so when the hip joint started to come apart, this structure should be helping to hold it since there was not the center ligament in the joint. Well, he cut a big hole because he thought that it was snapping due to it being tight. So Dr. Kelly sewed the hole back up and he took the sutures out of the front of my hip joint and he did a repair because there was tearing, of course, after someone is using their body weight to try and stretch your hip out, um, that there would be tearing in both the capsule and the muscle. So he did all those types of repairs. And because it was sewn together, there was other muscles that did become tight and he couldn't get them straight. So they, he had to do a, what's called releases to try to relax the tissue to get it to go straight. And um, we were able to get it straight in that procedure. We were able to um, get the IT band sewn back together with, so there was no more hole. Um, and I guess I should mention that Dr. Kelly had enlisted the help of a plastic surgeon. His name is Dr. Gale, another phenomenal surgeon in New York City. Super kind, just, I just really love Dr. Gale. Just a great guy and, and you know, very skilled surgeon. So the, between the two of them, you know, tried to repair and put my hip back together. And in rehab, I was unable to, to 
well, I was told not to put any weight through my hip, just flat, foot flat, and uh, not to put weight through it. And I wore um, a special hip brace to try to keep my hip in uh, good alignment and to keep it from coming out while it was healing. So I go to rehab um, five days a week, Monday through Friday, and those sessions were anywhere from two to three hours in length of time. And I did that from May, um, pretty much um, for six months. <laughs> it's about six months I was in rehab there. And in July, um, we decided that I needed to try to get my legs straight in a more uh, aggressive fashion uh, because we couldn't get it out straight in rehab. So they admitted me to the hospital and would take me down to the OR each day. Um, I had a spinal uh, to keep my leg numb and they would gently try to f apply force to straighten out my hip and straighten out my knee. But the neurological damage done, um, they could not overcome. And my 14 hospital day stay uh, ended with really no change. So I was fitted with a different type of brace and um, yeah, just trying to, to deal with uh, the current state of affairs, tried to rehab my way back. And in August, a month after I was in the hospital, I uh, had an MRI and we discovered that I had a tear in, a, in part of the glute muscle, there's several of them, but in one of the glute muscles that was over top of where some screws were in my hip, I developed a tear. So they repaired the tear in August. Um, in December, we decided we needed to take the screws out because I was still having issues. So the plastic surgeon, again, Dr. Gale, came in on the surgery with Dr. Kelly and they did more repairs of more tearing. And by this time I had what's called a sciatic nerve. A lot of people may know what that is. It uh, causes havoc for a lot of people that have back problems. The sciatic nerve can um, give you problems all the way down into your foot. Um, and so my sciatic nerve was entangled in scar tissue from where my T-band was um, first released big hole in it and then sewn back up the IT band and the sciatic nerve were in scar tissue together. So in the surgery in that December of 2010, uh, I dissected all that and tried to free up the nerve. And we were successful, but the nerve damage again was very prevalent. Um, no matter how good you are with big nerves like that, there typically is some type of nerve damage associated just because of the nature of nerve tissue. So uh, after that time I came home and um, went back to work. <laughs> um, wore, uh, wore this long leg brace and walked on crutches, uh, continued to go back and forth to, to New York City um, for some rehab and um, further testing, further evaluation. Um, again, like I said, I had a whole host of teams of people on there. Uh, I had one physician, his name was Dr. Niao, Peter Niao. He's now retired, but he was my pain management specialist. And he did all kinds of injections in and around my hip and my back to try to block the pain that was coming from my right lower leg. And um, that went on for years, actually. before then, April, April of 2012, uh, I met with Dr. Rosbrook, the gentleman that I'm seeing now, and he put on what's called an external fixator. The external fixator was a long, slow process of trying to get my hip and knee out straight. Um, so 
I decided in April that I would eventually have that apply, but I waited um, for a variety of other reasons. Um, scared really was the, was the big one. Uh, but finally in August, I pulled the trigger on having the frame applied. And um, mm, I thought the rehab in New York uh, with the first surgeon was bad, but this was worse. This was much worse. Trying to stretch nerve tissue via the pathway of screws in your femur and screws in your tibia. That's your upper leg bone and your lower leg bone. And turning, um, there's things called struts, turning them uh, like a centimeter at a time, slowly trying to get the tissue to stretch was agonizing. And it was on until November, uh, late November, almost December of 2012. We had accomplished it going straight, at least my knee, my hip not so much. Um, but after having it removed, it was a month later, by the time a month later, uh, all the contractures returned. <sighs> yeah. So, I have continued from 2012 until the present day with pain management, seeing physical therapists, doing my own rehab, um, trying to maintain what it is that I do have. Um, but as time goes on, we all get older and our bodies don't respond um, like they used to when we were younger. When this first happened to me, I was 37. It's 13 years later. So a lot said in this video with regard to the timelines. Uh, I have um, worked on some timelines, which I hope to be able to put up uh, throughout this video um, to try and give you a snapshot of where, um, where things occurred, how things occurred. Um, so you just don't have my voice, you have a visual. And um, I don't have any more videos of my treatment. I only have still pictures. Um, the videos when they were taken in the rehab facility uh, were on the premise that I was going to be showing the physical therapist here in Delaware what to do. Really, it was just a documentation of what I had undergone. Uh, I had no intentions of continuing to do or have done to me what he did. Uh, I just wanted it for my own personal records of what I endured. Um, so the next videos um, will be more in the present day. This has kind of been a look back um, and how did I get here and more, maybe more detail than what I've done previously. So I hope it hasn't completely bored you. <laughs> um, and I'm sure that it maybe still won't make sense, but I've had lots of people asking, you know, about what surgery did you have? Uh, I think all total, I've, I think it's like 11 uh, or 12, um, as far as, you know, in the OR and, and procedures done. Uh, that would not include any time uh, admitted to like a day surgery and having injections, uh, blocks, uh, nerve ablations, that's none of those. Um, this is just, you know, actual surgical procedures done um, in the hospital inpatient. So hopefully that gives you a, maybe a, a broader scope on, on what I have um, done as far as treatment, where I've, where I've sought treatment, and, um, and then today, you know, gaining information on do I stay, do I just continue to live like this or do I try to do something to um, stop the pain and stop the dysfunction, at least be able to maintain what I have. Okay, well, until the next video, God bless you and I'll see you uh, the next time.